So I'd like to say a big thank you um, for everyone to join, well, joining us and um, for Solar Arts as they host a discussion with arts and residents from this year's Festival 31, exploring two themes. So the first theme is what does creativity mean for connecting people of refugee and wider backgrounds? And the second theme is refugee artists, artists of displaced backgrounds, local artists, how do we self identify and I'm your host Gunan Adamu, I'm a presenter at BBC Radio Merseyside and the first thing I'm going to ask is for each artist to introduce themselves so I'm going to start with my left I think and I have Dorota. Dorota can you introduce yourself and the name of your art piece? Hello everybody my, my name is Dorota um, I'm very honored to be part of the festival. Uh, this is the first time I ever joined the festival since I moved to UK five years ago. Um, the title of my piece is Mandala of Hope and Dreams. And I've been painting the big mandala of dreams from 12 people from refugee background and non-refugee background have been collected the dreams and painted them. And where are you from, Dorota? Okay, <laughs> I am from Poland. Fantastic. And then to my right, I have Arthur. Arthur, can you introduce yourself and your piece? Hello, guys. Yes, I'm really happy to be here with you. Um, actually, my, my name is Adrian Mejia. Mejia is pronounced in Spanish. Uh, the name you see on the screen is the name I want to adopt once I get my refugee status. Because uh, one of the things I've been dealing uh, a lot is when I came here to the UK is I suffered a lot in my country. So part of that recovery, it was like a kind of reborn. So I wanted to reborn in a new person. So the name you see there on the screen is like, hopefully eventually one day when I get my status is the name I will adopt. Uh, but for now, for legal, legal stuff and stuff related to the home office, I should use the old name I used to have back in my country. Uh, so yeah, uh, in my piece, I use my old name for that because that's my identity as asylum seeker. And all that comes from the background as a, a gay man from El Salvador. And basically, uh, I was really excited when I got the invitation to be part of this festival. Uh, I'm on a LGBT supported network called Many Has One Heart, uh, which is ruled by Sahir House that, you know, you know, them. Uh, yeah, they told me a lot about you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, this supported network works with LGBT asylum seekers from all the world. And they just told me, you know what, there's this uh, mini uh, contest. So... I hope you can do something because you're really good at social media and stuff like that. And I said, yes, uh, because I think it's really important to uh, raise awareness or make visible the reality as asylum seeker we are suffering. And I'm glad I got the courage to stand up and say, this is what's happening to me. And this is what suffer, but there's people outside a lot of asylum seekers that I know they've been suffering a lot during this pandemic they don't have a voice for many reasons so I just wanted to put there outside uh, what I've been through all these days uh, so people can know there's different realities to this pandemic and next to Arthur I've got Karen hello um, thanks um, I'm Karen Wynn um, I'm a sort of new role for myself sort of this year um, i'm a community worker and artist based in toxter and i've actually worked with festival 31 in the past but as a kind of practical coordinator type person um and it i do a lot of work as an artist and as a performer and um, but it's particularly great for me to be working as an artist with festival 31 this year uh, my piece is called dismiss it's a uh, kind of six seven minute video piece and it's 
based on reflections of the work that I've done with refugee and asylum seeking communities in Liverpool over the last 20 years. Um, yeah. And next account, I have Nina. Can you introduce yourself and your art piece as well? Hello. Um, I'm, I'm born in the UK um, and um, I made a piece of work about living in the countryside. So I'm a brown skinned child of uh, Indian migrants who I didn't meet until my adult years. So um, I had this exile in the British countryside where I know the land and I know everything that lives there and grows there really well, but it, I'm always treated as if I shouldn't be there. So there's this sort of um, blockage in rural areas that um, people are not expecting to see brown skinned people there. So I wanted to try and think about that, but because it was lockdown, I couldn't go anywhere. So I had all these little film clips from in my phone that I had already. And then I used um, a recipe of my auntie's and I got my friends to pour uh, 10 kilos of basmati rice through my hand. <laughs> and then I got some more friends to translate the recipe and a story of a picnic, which the story of the picnic kind of links us all together because it seems that everywhere in the world, people like to go and take some food and eat it somewhere else and have a picnic. Because lockdown, there's lots of picnics because you can go and eat with your friends outside, but you can't go in a restaurant or go around the house. So um, I put the picnic in and I got, I got my friend, well, Bushaka and I have a mutual friend called Vina uh, Labo, the dancer, and she translated, did some translation for me. And the painters, the Sin Twins auntie, um, Auntie Charanjee did some translation. So it turned into like, um, it was a lovely adventure for me. And Washington Buckley, who uh, works front of house at Fact, I gave him the fee to, to, to um, edit the film because I don't have a computer that works very well and I don't have any editing software. So it was shared like a picnic. And on the Nina, I've got a Bain. Hi, uh, my name is Erbain Novo. Um, I'm really glad to be a part of this festival 31 again. Um, I have been participating since, uh, I think this is the third time I take a part in this uh, festival. Um, I'm from Burundi. Um, I'm an artist. I am a former architect back in, uh, in Burundi. Uh, my piece of work I did is called Isombe. Uh, when I came here in the UK, to the UK back in 2015, one of the challenges was uh, cooking because where I come from, we have that habit, not as a man, not cooking. So we had some people to cook for us. So it was really challenging for me to get where I buy food, what type of food I can do, even though I haven't cooked since when I was a child. I was my family, when I got married, married, we had somebody in our home to cook for us. So I didn't get any opportunity to cook um, or to shop. So, which was really hard for me in the very, very first days. So when this comes, um, it came across that that struggle probably I could uh, share with people. Uh, probably when they move to one country to the other, uh, they have different experience. For example, they don't get recipe, they don't know where the shop are. Uh, so this struggle made me feel like I can uh, um, share with other people how to make um, one of Burundian favorite food, which is called the zombie. So I did it with my wife because when my wife came over, we I was able now to go to to shop and we came up with combining different ingredients to make the, the a version a new version of uh, zombie. So I hoped that 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 art, piece of art probably could also not help only refugees, but also people in a wide community to experience new kind of 
<laughs> new dish. And um, yeah, that's I was happy to be part of this. Thanks. And next to Ben, I have um, Bisaka and Ali. So I don't know who would like to go. Bisaka, would you like to go first? I'm Bisaka. And now you can hear me. <laughs> But I will not take long, just because you're hearing me, I'm not going to talk forever. Um, we made a piece called Splash, um, which is about color and absolutely loved making it. I was born in Calcutta and um, came to England as an adult. And after coming here, suddenly I found that I have lost my identity. Uh, because I had a, quite a different dream of England. My mum was here uh, and I have heard about England from her as a child. And that was a dreamland, a fairyland, where there are shops where they sell chocolates and biscuits of all kinds. I thought it would be just like a place like that, a fairyland. But it wasn't. And... Um, when I say I lost my identity, I felt that when I was in India, I was staying in this street. I was going to that school. I was so-and-so's sister. I was so-and-so student. So I had all those identities. After coming here, I kind of found that I don't have any identity of my own. Uh, so I, it has been a, quite a long path to go through that. And then I came to um, have, um, work with Merseyside Arts, which was an arts organization. And through that, if I found an identity as myself, as Bishaka, um, doing dance work. So in a way, it has been something like losing an identity and gaining it back, recreating it again. And that has happened through arts. So I value that very much. And it's actually uh, one thing that I miss most is the family. And I think through art, by working mostly in collaboration, I have managed to build a new family for me, which is growing all the time. So I'll stop here and I will ask in that sense one of my family members of my this wider art world, Ali, to say the rest. Ali, over to you. Okay, uh, I'm Ali. I think I'm unmuted. You can give me a thumbs up if I... Great, thank you. Um, yeah, Bishaka is kind of an extended family really and I think uh, I'm, a, I'm an artist, a poet, a writer and a teacher and uh, you may be able to tell from my accent that I'm not born in Liverpool but Liverpool has been home for about uh, 25 years on and off um, and I was really happy to make um, Splash with Bishaka which as she said is kind of about colour um, and it's my first time working with Festival 31 so I'm thankful to do it and it's been a really good experience thus far and I'd, I'd really like to say thank you to the other people that contributed to our splash who made a splash so that would be as well as Bishaka it was Mirvat, Tony, Millie, Victoria, Carly, Sanjeevani who I can see in the chat and Victoria's in the chat as well um, and obviously Carly is in the chat as well uh, Sanjeevani and Jean and I'm trying to kind of as as my role as a teacher um, I've been tutoring this morning as well. So I've had six tutees this morning and they've been doing a little bit of a splash as well. And they come from all different places in Liverpool and beyond. So if you follow the hashtag Festival 31, you'll be able to see some of the younger people of Liverpool who make Liverpool their home. So, so far I've had Mate, Mohammed and Maddie. They don't all begin with them, uh, but other children other young people that are contributing to their memories of colour and how it impacts on them will be Olivia, Lottie, Alex, and there'll be others as well. I think that's about me for that. Thank you. I love colour. I'm a big colour person. I always, I always ask 
asked my son, what's your favourite colour and why is it your favourite colour? I think colour always brings out so much creativity and memories for so many people. Um, so I'd like to go to Callie. Can we go to you? Can you introduce yourself? Hi everyone, my name is Carly and I, um, I'm a dancer and a choreographer. Been in the UK for 22 years now, originally from Malaysia. And um, I recently moved to Liverpool. I say recently, it's been a year and a half actually. And, but I've been working in Liverpool since 2000 with Bishaka Sakar and Ali and, um, and created a lot of uh, amazing work here. And finally, I decided to make Liverpool my home. And um, my, my pieces for this festival, I added two because um, there was such an overwhelming response from the first video with artists. Uh, I call them my hand artists because my video is all based on how they use their hands, their caring hands uh, with uh, special objects which means a lot to them. So the, the, the video is called Moving a Charm. So um, the, um, their charms, uh, using their charms and how they uh, feel connected to it since um, nowadays we don't have the, the, op the opportunity to touch anyone because of the isolation. So I guess the, by, by feeling the tactile nature of the charm, which things which meant, means a lot to them, I think they kind of, uh, we kind of feel there is something to hold on to. So that was my first video. And then I created a second video because of the overwhelming response called uh, Caring Hands. Um, and I ded dedicated that to the NHS because of their great work. And yeah, those are my two videos. Hopefully you enjoy them. Um, and next I have Nezrin. Nezrin, can you introduce yourself and your piece? Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Nesrin Youssef. Um, actually, I'm from Syria. I'm Kurdish from Syria. And uh, my piece was called uh, The Will of the Universe, um, Unexpected and Out of Our Control. Um, like everyone is in this situation, you know, with the coronavirus, um, just came to my mind to put this um, little video and poem of myself and my cousin. Um, I'm here in England, he's in Germany at the moment and um, you know how the world planned you know uh, this universe actually you know uh, planned all this um, that you know it was out of our control and with the situation of coronavirus that um, it's not uh, let's not think always that you know something happened and we'll stop there you have to carry on forward and you never know what's the you know what's coming so uh, it was very good experience uh, i've been volunteering with uh, festival 31 in the past but it was a different role and it's actually brought up my <laughs> poetry uh, self uh, back uh, it was really really interesting um it moved me a lot and i and i hope that it's uh, it's reached uh, to the you know to everyone and um, it was all about hope and how you can, um, even if you haven't planned it, but you can go forward with hope and, uh, you know, with the strength. So thank you very much. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's amazing that you say that about the universe, because I, I said to so many people that um, a lot of us have asked for this without even realizing. We've asked to slow down, we've asked to take stock, and now the universe has forced us to exactly. <laughs> take time and everyone's panicking, but there's, it's out of our control. We just have to ride the wave and see what happens next. We'll see it in a positive way, you know? So I definitely <laughs> agree with you on that. There's nothing we can do. We just have to ride the universe and see what happens. Exactly. Um, next, I've got Becky. Can you introduce you. yourself and your piece, please? Oh, hello. Uh, th thank you all so much for being here and for, uh, yeah, everyone's work was so beautiful. I loved it all, honestly. Um, it's a real joy to be a part of this festival. This is my first time um, as part of Festival 31. My name is Becky. I'm from Liverpool. Um, 
and yeah, um, my piece is called uh, 31 Letters in My Alphabet and it was initially um, came from the idea, so I used to work in, a, in Anfield Road Primary School which is a, a gorgeous, gorgeous primary school and they have a lot of children there who are uh, from refugee backgrounds um, and a lot of Romanian children um, and there are 31 letters in the Romanian alphabet um, and the reason that I knew that was because um, of my time at the school and meeting those children and stuff. And um, yeah, it just kind of stemmed from, um, I have a, I, I'm a, a, a writer and um, a actor and a facilitator as well for uh, children, I facilitate uh, children's drama and things like that and um, writing. And um, yeah, it just kind of stemmed from, I guess, the my own fascination with how many languages there are in um, in Liverpool and how rich that is and um, I wanted to try and kind of explore the idea that um, there's a, a uniqueness and an identity within each language and um, yeah, yeah I, I worked with a couple of the families from the school who I knew um, to create a, a poem which they felt would represent their identity um, and then also um, Solar were kind enough to put me in touch with a, a couple of people as well from the Roma community, um, Alexandra and Sammy, and, and they did the same thing. We facilitated them creating a, a poem and we, we basically um, held a couple of workshops which sort of investigated um, the similarities and differences between languages. Uh, we played games where... Um, so one of the games was, I'd say, uh, of uh, here's five Scouse slang words. You know, can you guess what they mean? <laughs> um, and then yeah, in return, they then they sort of say to me, OK, right, uh, whoever got the most points within the family, they'd pick five words from their language and then I would then have to guess what they meant. So it was um, quite humorous and, yeah, really a lovely way to kind of share and connect through that. Um, so, yeah, I'm really grateful to have been a part of it. Thank you. I love that. And... It's, I went to one school in Liverpool and there was, they were celebrating diversity and I think if my memory serves me right, there was 42 languages that were spoken in that school and I just thought that's amazing, you know, especially coming from Liverpool and back in the 80s, there weren't that many languages, you know, and they weren't celebrated that much, so yeah it's it's brilliant to see how Liverpool's growing. Um, next I've got, I think that's my last one, is Rania. Hello. Yeah, it's my it's uh, Rania. Sorry, I just was busy with my son. <laughs> it's fine. So, Rania, can you introduce yourself and what the name of your piece is, please? Okay, my name is Rania. I'm originally came from uh, Syria. I'm Kurdish. Um, I have been here uh, around um, five years, and um, I graduated as an architect. But I unfortunately I I couldn't. I like work as an architect, but I was volunteering with uh, uh, different um, uh, architectural uh, offices, uh, and uh, I joined um, so uh, Festival Thirty One a few years ago. Um, I am an artist. Um, I do painting, and uh, I did uh, photograph um, with a um, uh, photojournalist uh, called um, Howitt. Uh, and uh, this year, my piece called uh, Hope, it's um, my idea came from um, all, the all the situations because um, uh, I skipped from a country that uh, had a war. So, um, so without hope, uh, according to current uh, time, so we all need hope to continue our lives. So... I, because in Liverpool we had lots of different languages, so I asked uh, lots of friends to, uh, to express uh, hope uh, uh, in their languages and uh, in their ways. So I made uh, a video uh, speak about, um, because I just um, chose uh, a sentence called like whenever we had um, a difficult time uh, we still hope um, for a beautiful uh, future so I asked them to to say it in their languages that's fantastic so 
the, so as I mentioned earlier on, there's two themes that we're looking at. And the first thing which I'd like to pose to you um, artists is, what does creativity mean for co connecting people of refugee and wider backgrounds? Um, because it is very important, I think art is such an important tool um, that sometimes I think people um, mis can misunderstand art, but also it, it plays a part in, in reaching so many people. So a lot of you have kind of mentioned, mentioned a little bit within your introductions, but yeah, what does creativity mean to you um, in connecting people of refugee backgrounds with the wider community? Who would like to go first? I don't know if you want to put your hands up or how you'd like to do it. Don't be quiet now. I'm going to go, hi, Arthur. Yeah, <laughs> so, um, well, I think it's, it's something I could uh, talk a lot, but I'm not going <laughs> to be long. Uh, uh, so, Gay guy and a member of Many Hands One Heart. Through arts, we've been having a lot of events when people from different backgrounds or different uh, cultures they share or they express themselves how they live uh, their sexuality in the terms of how they live like gays from different backgrounds. You know, uh, we got some events that sadly this year for the corona we didn't have it. Uh, is the International Day Against Homophobia and Transphobia, and it's on the May 17. And on that day, uh, we put like kind of multicultural show, uh, showing different stuff from different regions. But what I tried to point is like some people. Uh, they think being gay is, is the same everywhere, you know, and in this case, true arts, we can say, you know, in our countries, uh, we were not allowed to be how we, we are, uh, we are not allowed to be free. So through this piece of art, through this performance, to, through this song or through this dance, we can express ourselves and show people how we see ourselves back in our countries, but at the, t at the same time, how we see ourselves now. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but it's like uh, through arts, uh, we can express things that normally we can do as refugees. Uh, and what I tried to point is like some members of Many Hands One Heart, like uh, they don't have like good knowledge of English, so they cannot stand up in front of the audience and do an amazing speech telling all the stuff uh, outside. But rather than that, they can just stand there and play a song and say, you know, this is a song back from my country and means a lot to my country. Well, we're gonna make it now gay. <laughs> we're gonna make it like uh, LGBT. So it's good in that, in that way how different cultures, they can, be co uh, colored with the rainbow and cultures that usually uh, doesn't have LGBT uh, stops outside, they can be colored with that rainbow colors. Yeah, yeah, I love that. So speaking, it, it speaks volumes, isn't it? With, it kind of links into Bisaka and Ali's um, piece around splash and color and the importance of color. And the, the funny conversation that I had with a friend, um, around even just the new rainbow when they introduced the black and the brown into the rainbow flag. And there were some people who were like, what? <laughs> I'm happy with the flag just the way it is, but it meant so much to, you know, to the, the ethnic minorities that wanted to also be represented to yeah. show that actually there's other um, parts of the gay community, the LGBTQ community that you don't, you don't get to see as much or art are not visible to you. So yeah. Um, Abain, can I come to you, you know, because you, yours is about food and, and dishes. I love food. <laughs> so how important um, was it to show, you know, this dish and share this dish to people? Yeah, um, I, I thought that it was very important, especially I can see this in the angle that 
being a refugee and um, in this situation of coronavirus, everybody had been held at home where it was isolated or some people were very busy at work, but on some, with this in a situation, uh, it come at the attention where people need to stay at home. Some, they had some people who could provide food for them, they eat in a restaurant, but at home then they had to find the way of connecting with their, their, their relatives or their loved ones. So this I thought um, in terms of when I came to England, it was really, really hard for me. And um, I found that this, in a way, the community as well, this can be very helpful because food, eating healthy is very important and learning new new dish it can be also important in life, life changing as well so uh, that was an inspiration and i think if somebody can adopt this approach also it can be helpful for the life and you know um i came to the uk when i was three from nigeria and one of the ways that my mum tried to educate people in our streets about who we were was through nigerian food you know, and I remember the first time she made pounded jam with okra. And when you cut up the okra, it's quite, it's got like a slimy consistency. So the children go, oh, what's, what's this? <laughs> and then that was a way of us educating them on, on where we were from. And they wanted to know more about who we were. But they enjoyed the Nigerian food. Absolutely loved it. Um, I was going to ask as well, um, for any of the audience who would like to ask a question, could you inbox, um, where does the group chat? Could you send it to Rebecca? And then Rebecca will be able to send it to, to me. Yeah, does that, is that okay? Would anyone like to add on that? How important, you know, your art has been in connecting people? Oh, Karen. Um, I think just following on from what Arthur was saying and, and, and also the food thing, um, my main artistic practice is as a musician and it's really, really common for people to say music, it's an international language. It's like I can, and I have, you know, I've worked with a lot of particularly um, Senegalese musicians and you can just sit with people and not have any common verbal language and be able to create and you create a connection and I've always thought as well, you create connections with people faster when you work together, when there's like a common goal. And I think actually that counts probably for all of the artistic mediums that, you know, yeah, okay, music is one that people say this is an international language, but food, likewise, is an international language. Painting, you know, it, all of these artistic and creative means allow us to really communicate on quite a deep level, but without necessarily having any other kind of common ground that we know of or that you know that we found so it's a way of transcending any of those other the inability to communicate verbally or in other ways i suppose um yeah yeah bisaka um uh, in i'll just give an example of the piece that we made spam a uh, splash so when we were there uh, we just met everybody. We all were thinking about the color and how to make a little poem about it. And um, so it was so easy to connect. You know, I, we didn't think about let's connect this one to that person or let's have a big introduction. Uh, our commonalities really came through. We were all because we were all thinking about the same thing just to create something. So art in my experience often brings people because you don't question about the person, their individual things so much. You just give something where, and especially if you choose to work in that way, everybody can come and contribute in their own ways. I also think as well with art, it tells a story of that time and how people were feeling in that moment in time. And one of the things I've always loved doing is any countries that I visit, I love to see the art. I love to go to the gallery and I've learned so much about history 
um, just through art, art pieces, and as Carol mentioned, and music as well. You know, so that's I always find that it's it's really educated me in those times and those countries and you know, and civil wars and, you know, and changes in history and policies and stuff. So it's been a really important tool for, for the world to understand. Um, I want to go into um, how do you, so how do we self-identify um, using our, our artwork? Dorota, let me come to you. <laughs> Thank you. Um... I feel as a um, voluntary displaced artist from Poland five years ago. Um, and Bisharka's words really touched me. I was crying because it was the process of um, losing identity and I'm gaining it again, but it's still a process. <laughs> mm. And you know what I think as well, for, for me, the longer you stay in one country, you try so hard to hold on, you know, and for me, especially I, having my son in this country, I was fortunate that I had my mum to teach him ways of what we do in Nigeria, because for, for me, if I was by myself, there's no way I'll be able to speak the language. I can't even cook the food, <laughs> you know. Um, and it is, it's, it's, trying to, it's trying to find yourself on how you fit in in a place that's so new. Um, and you, you, want to re you want people to know, yeah, I am, I am this person. I always say, I am, I am Nigerian. I'm a Nigerian scouser now. And then I go to Nigeria and visit and they'll say, no, you're not Nigerian. And I'm saying, no, I am Nigerian. <laughs> so you're constantly having to fight to find where you fit in. Arthur, do you want to go? <laughs> yes, that's something I really uh, want to reach because that's something really important about my whole story. And I put something about that on my documentary. You know, sometimes people, and I suffer a lot about that, that people that I know back in my country, they, they always say, don't forget about El Salvador, don't forget about this country, don't forget about where you came from. But being really honest, I don't care about that country because I suffered so much there. And since I came here to England, I found really a place where I can be myself, where I can be accepted. So usually people try to drag me sometimes, people try to, uh, say a lot of stuff because say, you know, you think you're British now, you think uh, changing your name, you're gonna uh, erase everything back about your old country. But the truth is, uh, you know, in my personal experience, coming to a new place, when people respect me, when I can be myself, when I can be free, you, you know, you don't know how much means to me just to hide my hair long and blonde, you know, back in my country, uh, I was assaulted by the police because I bleached my hair blonde. I, I have a short, but really short, like a straight, short blonde hair. And the police, they say I was too gay and they beat me out and they just left me lying on the street because they thought I was too gay. And now here, just being able to have my hair and go into the street and the people say, oh my God, I love your hair, it's so gorgeous. It, it means a lot to me. So I think something really important about culture, and that's what I want to say, and identity, is culture doesn't mean something that haunts us, if that makes sense. Because in my case, I don't do anything related about the country I was born, because I don't feel related to that country. I don't feel the, the society ideas, I don't see the moral of all that stuff of that country belongs to my person. I think what I learned here about England, because also here in England, I learn about myself, I learn about my identity. That is who I am and that's my culture. The culture of Liverpool especially is my culture. And I will say the culture of Liverpool is really open and multicultural also to a lot of other stuff. So I just want to, 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 to say that because uh, sometimes uh, 
people don't get really well, uh, what's that something like culture could affect also people? Because I know a lot of asylum seekers that they feel bad remembering their, their home places. And they say, like, like you say, you know, I'm in a new place and trying to cope with this new place uh, and trying to find myself here. I don't see I belong to that country, but I don't see I belong at all at this country. So it's kind of difficult also for asylum seekers in that sense to identify a culture. Yes, Kelly. <laughs> and it's, it's interesting you say that because I interviewed a young woman yesterday who is black, queer, and from Somalia. And she said, I don't feel like I belong anywhere, but that allows me to be free. And I'd never heard anyone say that. She said, I feel so free that I just, I'm, I'm, I don't, I feel like I don't have to fit in to anything, you know, but she's found Liverpool to be her home. And I just thought, oh, okay then, interesting. Callie, what would you like to say? I completely relate to what Arthur says. And um, because I, I'm from Malaysia so, and I don't identify myself as Malaysian or Indian as, as I do Indian dance or my ancestors being Sri Lankan, I, I don't identify to any of them. I, I believe and I, I identify myself as a human being. Uh, and and I, don't, I don't believe in segregation. We are all same as human beings. So that's, that's me, yeah. So in terms, but you know, there must be something in your, in your background, your culture, your history that has, you know, interpreted or allowed you to interpret your art in the way that you have done? Um, my art is always evolving because I, I, I am very open-minded in my dance and I accept a lot of different styles. I don't, I'm, I don't get hooked on to one a particular style, especially coming from an Asian classical dance background, where you folk, you have to focus on one style. But I broke all that and became very flexible. So I'm very, very adaptive and very open-minded. So, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to go to um, Nina. Can I come to you? Because um, you said something interesting earlier on about you know finding yourself and your heritage and where you belonged, um, has that, has art allowed you to do that or was that a journey you were going on anyway? Um, very much so, uh, because where I grew up, I had um, very low status. I was in a small village in North, North Gloucestershire in the 1960s and 70s. And so it was quite a, a rough, directly racist, um, very pro-colonial environment. So I made a new world for myself using art. I just made the world I wanted to be in. I literally drew it. And then when people saw the drawings, they like they were like, oh, look, you've drawn these plants and look what Nina's done. So then I realized I could not only be allowed to be there and not get thumped, but I could be admired for this thing of, um, making a new space with drawing and so that's how I think about culture really is of course there's classical forms where of music or architecture or any form cooking even as a classical form but if you have some ingredients you can always make a brand new thing and so that's what I think cultural workers are doing they're making the future they're making a brand new thing and then the audience have to decide if they want to look at it or not but they can't judge it against another, another. or whether actually it to me, I, I, some people do, they say, this isn't like proper art, you've made it with felt pens. <laughs> but you know, they can, people that in the audience will always recognize something of quality that they want to jump into. So say on the window of squash, I've done like 25 felt pen drawings. <laughs> and even though officially, good art is not made with felt pens, that's like the children's. <laughs> but if you draw, if you use them and you can make this new world and say, look at this another way, it's just been my saving. If I, if I hadn't had that capacity, I really find it hard to imagine surviving. And also other people's culture, whatever it was, became avail available. So black American music, Nina Simone, um, people that were singing and writing in a radical way 
they enabled the survival of huge, huge numbers of people, particularly actually people that write in English, so writers from the Caribbean, Yes, My Pal, or, you know, a number of poets, Grace Nichols, lots of people that were using a language that I, the only language I can speak is English. I put the other languages in the film because that's part of my exile. I'm exiled from the language base of the group of people I'm perceived to belong amongst. Um, so that's probably enough. But I, I just want to say, um, what's your name? To is that Tony who liked yellow in that? Yeah, I'm, I sat by a yellow wall. <laughs> <laughs> because Ali said you like yellow. Well, I'm <laughs> glad you're here because I'm a yellow boy. I've got, I've got a yellow bathroom. Well, I say it's mustard. <laughs> you <call> yellow. <laughs> yellow is a big colour. Thank you, Nina. Um, Rania, can I come to you in terms of, you know, how you self-identify and, you know, if that has translated into your artwork? Because I know you as well as Nezrin, I've had quite a journey as well. But I want to come to you first. Okay. I was saying about self, um, how do you self-identify and has that translated into your artwork? Uh, I came from a, a country that uh, we have a, a different, um, what's called, um, difference. In my country, there is um, different um, uh, languages. Uh, there is um, people from different um, background, but uh, was like I can say like we had a, a racist um, uh, a way to uh, like in my country. It's um, wasn't um, you are you are not allowed uh, to speak your uh, mother uh, language. Like um, you are Kurdish, so if I'm in uh, school, so wasn't um, allowed to speak in Kurdish. So if I did, so it was like illegal, you know. So uh, all the time, I'm think like we are all different. Like we are all in this universe. We are different. We had. Um, we have we have like uh, different uh, different uh, background, so I all the time uh, hope to like accept each other and respect each other, uh, with whatever where I came from. So uh, I all the time try to uh, uh, respect um, like respect difference, like the difference, respect different mind different people from different backgrounds uh, because uh, in my country that wasn't like um, like wasn't allowed to be uh, have like uh, like uh, I'm Kurdish so I don't uh, read and writing I'm just uh, speaking and listening so it's like something like um, like I all the time try to um, uh, hope we all like uh, like respect the difference uh, in this universe so in my piece so i try to uh, show people that we have different language different background different um, like faces you know colors uh, and everything and um, like but we all like sometimes have same uh, goals like Mm, because we all need hope to continue. So uh, my uh, idea came whenever we are like um, different people and different, uh, like we have different backgrounds, but we still, there is like uh, big lines in this life. We still have like um, same, Oh my God, I'm sorry for my... Um, no, you're perfect. Express, you're fine. You know? But all the time I try to find ways to uh, to show that we all different, you know? So we have to respect, we have like to accept each other. That's all the time. And like when when anybody listen to that video and see it, say, so 
he will see or she will see our different faces, people, colors, uh, even like languages, tones, because these tones uh, makes them um, like an like a harmony between, you know. Uh, so that's my piece. No, that's brilliant, and I and I, I totally echo what you say. You know, we always said that Liverpool um, was the world in one city. Yes. You know, and just looking on the screen, you can see we really have the world in one city, and it's it's so beautiful to see. It really is. Um, Nezrin, did you want to add to what um, Rania said? Um, um, yes, actually, um, like Rania said, unfortunately. Um, uh, as a Kurdish person from Syria, um, you don't expect, you know, the war, uh, the war started only 10 years ago um, in Syria. It was unfortunately a um, long, long time ago for us as Kurdish people, as we didn't have rights, we didn't have the right to work, to have, you know, um, um, a better life, uh, to have our own children, to be able to speak the mother tongue or write in the mother tongue. So um, that's all different and the world is, um, you know, making much, much difference. And now, yes, it's, it's still a big struggle. It is, uh, but you always need to fight and find yourself uh, as you are. So um, in a way, I will disagree with Arthur, uh, you know, as a Muslim woman, as you can see, um, if you are to present yourself, don't be worried and don't be scared to be yourself wherever, whatever you are. Um, and uh, that's the only way to find yourself. If you are not accepting, the, you know, that this culture, they didn't accept me, by, uh, but yes, I am accepting it. And I, I mean, like accepting it in a way that I will argue with you and I will find myself in you, you know? So, um, yeah, that's all what I wanted to add. Thank you. And, you know, it's funny you say that because I, w I was having a conversation with a friend of mine and we were talking about system consciousness. We were saying, <laughs> so you have to, you, you can only make change from inside. You can't make change from outside. So, yeah. Adele, is it time for questions? It is. Hello. I've come back in again. Hello, everyone. It's been really interesting to listen to. And, and I've also come in to, I'm kind of going to dip out again, but I feel like I'm like a little kind of like just coming in and giving a bit of information and going out. It is. And, and um, Rebecca and I have, have, had, a, have had a chat because you can when you're muted and non-videoed <laughs> with each other. And we were just thinking that we're, we're quite a nice sized group really um, with um, the artists and audience together. Um, and um, we wondered whether people just wanted to, if it's okay with you and Gunan, um, people from the audience just wanted to kind of raise their hand if they wanted to ask a question actually, um, for you to be able to facilitate that rather than having to wait for questions to come in via text. So how would you feel about that and going on to okay. facilitate in that way? Yeah. yeah. So uh, a bit more of a free for all. So feel free to put your hand up and um, yeah, I saw a few I, I saw a few nods. So uh, you know so it'd be nice to get those nods, you know, to ask some questions. So I don't know. Um should I go to horse? You you saw I, I you look like you wanted to say something during that discussion. Um well actually no I was just listening. Because, you know, it's Becky made me aware of, of, of this Q&A session um, and the Festival, Festival 31, because I'm actually from Austria. And um, I just found it interesting that um, the idea to use a language um, to try to communicate with each other between cultures. You know? So actually um, to use a foreign language to communicate between different cultures I found a very interesting idea and the thing is what also interested me is because I'm, I've been observing for quite a while now the situation in the UK you know how it is now with leaving the EU being one thing that um, obviously many people were not happy with with um, so many people coming from abroad you know? and it, it's not I thought I would really very much like to hear 
a first hand um, um, account of it you know, up, uh, other unless than just listening uh, from some some uh, some news on TV or reading something in a newspaper I thought that would be might be um, good to hear some first hand relations and I had this and and it was really interesting and for instance the experience of, or or the impression that Arthur said that he doesn't relate anymore to his home country because uh, he wasn't himself at home and he he could be himself now in a foreign country uh, which is which is a bit weird but I'm, I'm of course happy he found a place where he can be himself um, so I'm, I'm actually just listening I found it very nice and very um, I find it really great yeah, yeah. Mm. Frank would you like to add something Sorry, did you say Frank? Yeah. Um, no, I, I don't. I don't really have anything to add. I, I'm. This has been just such a. I'm, this is my first day back from furlough, so it's been like oh, all of the new things, and uh, it's just been really. Obviously, Rebecca spoke a little bit about this festival um, before I went on furlough, but this is still like it's been a wonderful crash course in getting to know um, all of the artists and all of the things that you're doing. Um, so. I'm I'm a, come into it really ignorant. I'm sorry. I have not done my homework at all. But uh, now I feel up to speed, and I'm really excited about going online and watching all the pieces because it. I, I almost think you know how when you go and see a show, the Q and A is normally after the show. I kind of feel that this way of having the Q and A in front of it's really nice. And now I'm thinking maybe that's how we should do stuff. I love that, Tony. Oh, I think there's been um. So I just want to say, particularly I think with a lot of digital uh, stuff at the moment, that it, I don't know if anyone else has found this, that it's quite hard to engage with a lot of the digital theatre that's out there at the moment because it feels, you know, there's a lot of Netflix as well to get through. Um, but this has just been, it feels like I have a bit of a personal connection to everything now. So I just want to say thank you to everyone for being so generous and sharing your personal stories along with your art. And I'll shut up now. <laughs> Victoria, did you want to add something? Yes. Um, first of all, I want to say hello to everyone and to the Kurdish um, people here. I want to say Choni. Uh, <laughs> I lived in Kurdistan for two and a half years and it was amazing. Um, so, uh, the Iraqi Kurdistan, not um, Syrian Kurdistan, but this visit. Um, I, Responding to the questions you said earlier about art and identity, and I always find it quite problematic to say um, one is a refugee artist and etc. I, I find that um, in my experience working in refugee camps, artists always identified as artists. They never said they were anything other or that they needed anything else to, um, to, to make themselves any more artists. Um, and as a poet uh, myself, published poet, I found that working with Bishaka and Ali on that, on this flash project, um, made my art as a poet a lot richer. So it wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't producing something as an individual, um, but the fact that the individuals within the group formed that bridge. Um, between the cultures that we have um, in one in, in one city in one um, locale made the artist experience um, a lot richer and and that I, the identity as artist as poet um, a lot stronger and I, I, I don't know I always find it quite problematic to say I'm a I was born in Nigeria, but I don't identify as a Nigerian poet because I am not. Uh, I, I don't. I, uh, I am British, and and I've, I've called more than twelve countries home, and neither in any of these countries have I identified as um, uh, a, a, an Iraqi poet or. Um, a New Zealand poet or a, a, an American poet. I've always been a poet. Uh, and this, the, the, the artist is the artist. 
And of course, the identity of the artist can sometimes, um, you know, um, add to the art. Like Arthur said, yes, you have your art, but sometimes um, where you've come from uh, or who your parents were is not what defines the art. So it's always quite, find it quite problematic to attach um, these kind of appendages to, uh, to, to the creativity of an individual. And you know, it's very interesting you say that because the conversation of race and language is something that is coming up really strong right now. Um, and even just the terminology. So you have, you know, some people question the terminology being, they don't like that. And then you, on one hand, you've got other people saying, I don't want to be classed as person of colour. So imagine working, you know, in government trying to find <laughs> what works for everyone. You know, because like you, you know, I, I, with everything that I do, I'm always like, I'm a Nigerian Scouser. I hold on to that, like, it's my badge of honor, you know. But then, you know, you're saying that you're, you don't want that title at the beginning because you see yourself differently. So I think so many of us, it's, we are such a conundrum <laughs> of, of many things that it'll be interesting to, oh, yeah, Victoria. Uh, I, I mean, I, I mean, which is why, um, in, you know, which is why having an appendage is problematic because yeah. um, where one person feels strongly uh, of of an identity, um, and the other do, of the same I suppose that identity doesn't feel the same. It doesn't feel equally strongly, and wouldn't want to be identified as such. Um, I mean. I always take an example from what would be the majority culture. Um, I, I, I never hear uh, a white artist being called a white artist. Um, I mean, uh, no one ever refers to a white artist as the white artist from France, you know. Um, uh, but no one ever says, oh, the, the first white artist he, wherever, if, if, even even in Africa, um, you have white artists perform and be part of the community, and they are just who they are. You know, they they, they are just them, uh, Frank, uh, John, whoever, <laughs> and um, they are not um, uh, categorized by you know um, something by group or by color. Uh, and and I, you know, personally, I feel that art is the one thing that allows us to be us without an appendage, um, and that maybe within the art community, we should start to make sure that we, you know, we should start to think about that identity much more clearly, and be, you know, and express it <laughs> in the way that we we um, we want it. I definitely think it's a, it's a fantastic conversation to be able to um, ask someone. I think that's the main thing for me now is how would you like to be identified as? Um, but Bissaka, you had your hand up before and then I'll come to you, Ali. So Bissaka, can you go first? Shall I come? Um, Tony also had his hands up. And I, would, I wish Nina was here because that's what I was going to say that um, just to let you know that Tony likes yellow. Nina's wall was yellow and she liked it too. So I was going to tell you that, oh, I know Tony likes yellow. And I could have never told you that. He's born in El Salvador, me in Calcutta. Had we not done this project, I wouldn't have known that. So. For me, this is a clear example that art brings people together. Uh, was it Ali? And then I'll come to Tony. Hi, yeah. Um, I think it's really interesting talking about how to identify yourself. I work a lot with young people and how they've responded, say, to example, for, for example, to the splash um, uh, video that we did. I show them like a screen like we've got here of the different people that were involved and saying, oh, there's Bishaka. She was born in India, but she lives in Liverpool now. And there's uh, there's Victoria. She was born in uh, Nigeria, but she's chosen to um, to call Liverpool home. When you're working with young people, 
they're very much more accepting sometimes than what we turn into as adults. And I think sometimes uh, th there are a few things that I really found interesting looking through everyone's videos as well. So when, um, when Arthur was saying, uh, I think on your fourth video, you said you're grateful to British people for their goodwill and the good heart and so on. You could see your kind of journey from your, um, from your first video to your fourth video, even, even within the context of um, Festival 31. And I really like in this discussion that we've had, uh, I think it was Nezrin who said um, that you kind of disagree with Arthur, but I love that thing that you said, uh, I will argue with you, but I will find myself in you. And I think when we talk about like creativity, um, to, to kind of paraphrase Ken Robinson, he said, creativity is imagination with purpose. And if I think you're purposeful with other people, it makes a really big difference. And finally, I was talking to somebody who is not um, a refugee, but someone who's been excluded from school <laughs> this morning, talking about what is creativity? What does that mean to you? And they replied with, it needs to have input and output. It's when you, and it might be with people that you never normally meet with, where you have a common interest. And it might even be that parade, if you call it a parade, that was down on the pier head when all the Liverpool fans came together. You might say, well, that wasn't very creative, but it's people coming together. And when you find a common interest, whether it's colour, whether it's music, uh, whether it's language, it it really helps to bind us as individuals. Tony, did you want to add something? Yes, yes, thank you. Hi, hi everyone. Um, yes, I just want to add something about creativity. And before I worked with Bichalka and Ali, I didn't, con I didn't see myself as, a, as an artist, but now I can say I am because I wrote a poem about yellow color and then what I found is that creativity breaks barriers. Because what I see is that sometimes creativity allows us to look for different ways to connect with people. It can be by food, by poems, by music. So it's not just a connecting in one way. Creativity, that's the beauty of beautiful of creativity. There's like, look for different ways of connecting. And when you connect with people, you can show yourself as, as you are. And that's another important thing. Because what I can see now, what I, how I see Liverpool is a, it's like a garden, different colors. And the color is what made beautiful the garden. So that's how I see, um, the, the creativity and the, that's how in talking about festival 31 last year i was part of the organizing team and what i found was that spaces like this allow us to connect with people and and to really go ahead of what you see the faces is go deep in person and show show that music thought and and that's and that's how how we learn about different culture. I I really was um, very grateful when I met Nesrin and I was asking about her country and you know it's it's, it's beautiful and, and and that's how creativity. That's how I see creativity. Thank you. And I think that's one of one of the th reasons why i i am a big believer of um the power of labels and especially with being in the uk i think for me you know like i said earlier on i was saying that i interviewed a young lady yesterday who was black queer from somalia now for her she wants to say that because number one coming from somalia she didn't fit in you know she she couldn't she couldn't fit in because of she was from the queer, no, she was queer. So come and she ran away, you know, to come and settle in Liverpool where she felt that she belonged, but she wanted 
for her, being able to say what she was was a kind of a fight to Somalia to say, you didn't accept me, but this is what I've gone to achieve. So sometimes those labels allow us to be able to use it politically for situations that we're within, but also, as Tony mentioned, to educate people on our culture and who we are. And even if that culture doesn't accept us, we came from that culture, you know, regardless if we're there or not, you know, with my very strong Scouse accent. <laughs> Is there anyone that would like to add anything to that discussion? Siobhan, you're sitting there just looking really... Uh, <laughs> you know what, I'm just taking it all in I'm just like I've just yeah I've been listening loads um and found it really really interesting um I've done a lot of research in the past and and written about um being a member of the Irish diaspora um so yeah I found it really really interesting and I would love to know more about the festival because I like Frank I came to this um like this morning I just basically saw a, a thing that a tweet and was kind of like oh I want to see that I want to know more about it so I'd love to know like where I can like look at all of the works and that kind of thing. That would be great. Karen, you wanted to say something? I want to say so much. <laughs> um, just there's so many interesting things have come up. And I just, I'm just going to like, uh, in response to Horst, um, I love where I live. I love the richness that the diversity of LA and Liverpool bring to my life and the different people that I work with and learn from. And, and I do find that in terms of those prejudices that, that may be what I perceive to be prejudices that lead people, for example, to want to leave the EU, it's always people who haven't experienced living in a diverse community. It's always people who, you know, the people who might say, I don't want, you know, people do say, I don't want asylum seekers living in my community. It's people who've never really met them and been able to get rid of that label. Um, but having worked for Festival 31 in the past, some two points. The first being, people very often say to me, but there's not like a big community of refugee artists in Liverpool. Why? And I say it's not, it's because actually people are artists first and foremost, and actually quite often, maybe they access support from organisations that work with refugees at the beginning, but once they're able to start settling and establish they leave that refugee label that identity behind because actually that's not who they are they are artists or their mothers or their architects their care workers whatever um, but people don't want to be defined by that part of their lives and the, but the other then contrasting difficulty about leaving those labels behind is that if you want to reduce prejudice and bring people together you have to start from the label so by you have to kind of say well okay come and meet these refugee artists you meet them then you can forget the tag of refugee but if it's it's a really difficult um meeting point that kind of the labeling it's it's like super super tricky and i don't know what the answers are but i struggle with it myself and um, in terms of doing that kind of work that brings people together to get rid of the difference but you're bringing them together because the difference exists i don't know if that really makes sense oh, it definitely it definitely did mm -hmm. no absolutely i think if, if i might uh, add something um being from austria or exactly from vienna you know that vienna for 600 years was was the center of, of the Habsburg monarchy so there was um, all these people from from all the con from the crown lands from Austria. They were coming to Vienna, so Vienna was a, a melting pot of, of nations for six hundred years. And so, if you look at instance for my name, Rebening, my family name, this is a name that, um, if you know it, it comes from Slovenia. So one of my great grandmothers came from Slovenia. Another one came from Poland, another one came from Hungary. So if you are, I'm now in third generation uh, uh, living in Vienna, my family, but still if you go um, one generation further back, then you end somewhere. Yeah. And so I found always, uh, you can always learn something from another culture. Yeah. So uh, it doesn't matter whether it's black or whether it's Czech or whether 
another country, there was something which I could take home, which was something I said, okay, that's something now nice. I want to integrate this into my personality, into my life. And so that's, that's how I see different cultures, um, different religions. I think you can always find something worthwhile for you, whoever you are, queer, not queer, straight. Um, the differences uh, make your lives richer if you allow if you allow that, of course. Um, but I, I want to come back to what you say. You need some kind of a starting point and the, the labels. If, if the label is the starting point, then it's good. But you're right, you should, you should come to a point where the label is then not, not important anymore. So that's the goal or that should be the goal. Yeah. And if the label is, is necessary on the way, then, then it's fine. Okay. Oh, and Victoria? Um, I was going to say, um, is there scope in the future? I mean, responding to uh, uh, Karen, the question, the, the question you were mulling over, um, uh, how do you approach these things? Uh, uh, is there scope in the future of Festival 31 to have much more collaboration between artists? Because in my experience, to be honest with you, in the different countries I've lived in and being the, the non-local person, and calling those places home. It is those collaborations that are um, more than the label that has built bridges for, for uh, artists. And it is, you know, coming to listen to the poetry, I dance as well, um, uh, coming to, you know, watch people perform um, has been the bridge. And people come to enjoy the art piece, the performance, uh, and then meet the individuals. Uh, and then get to know their story. Um, I particularly enjoyed Bishaka and Ali's collaboration. And there was an interesting, you know, Bishaka being a dancer and Ali being a poet. Uh, there was something that both of them brought to that pro to, to the Splash project that we did together. Um, uh, the, the musicality um, and, and movement in Bishaka's um, art form combined with Ali's um, lyrical uh, linguistic background in its art, you know, allowed the, 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 the rest of us to achieve a lot more um, from that project than we, pr we probably would have if it were just Bishaka or just Ali um, coordinating it. And um, so it's my, my comment is both a question and, you know, an invitation is uh, uh, maybe we should think about, you know, much more collaboration with the wider community that we live in. We live in Liverpool. I would really want to work with more um, established artists, you know, filmmakers, et cetera, in other, you know, so it's not just the backgrounds, not just like um, ethnic backgrounds, but also artistic backgrounds um, uh, to, to make the festival bigger um, and much more involved. <laughs> so I've got, a th I've got a three minute warning. Um, Adele, would you like to answer Victoria's question? Thank you. I'd love to. And I can imagine that Karen, with your knowledge of, of Festival 31 and some of the artists might also be hovering on that that um, suggestion and Vicky I think it's absolutely valid and very important um, thoughts around Festival 31 and um, actually it's something that we have historically done for Festival 31 it's been um, it's been from the beginning from 2014 the artists from um, the different backgrounds that are represented in this year's group have historically um, being encouraged to pair up or work together to produce artwork and to share their creativity. So Rani, I was talking about working with Howard. Howard is a, um, a very well-established photojournalist and photographer who's documented many um, uh, conflicts and um, uh, situations around the world. And they worked also with Nesrin and with other, other people to... Um, to produce new pieces of artwork. And um, Bishaka has actually mentored and worked with people. And th th there has been that thread through Festival 31 over the years. 
I think to put it into context for this year, um, we didn't have the um, budget for that longer term collaboration that it's, it's quite in depth um, and it takes a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, of time and reflection and process to, to make happen in a meaningful way um, and to allow the art artistic talents to come out from people. But I think that going forward is certainly something that we would want a lot more of um, to enable that conversation creatively to happen between people and to support people who are emerging as well as people who are established kind of being re-inspired and, and, and invigorated by working with, with, with new people as well. Um, and, and sharing these questions that we've got today, really. And the same for the festival, really. The festival historically has had, you know, events where there might be 150 people. We've been at the Tate where we've had like 3,000 people come and see the work, you know, over, over a week. Um, so I think, it, I think that question is maybe pertinent to what it means to be Festival 31 online as our first experience as well. And how 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 this can be navigated and where this goes in the future so that's a bit a bit more than a nutshell wasn't it uh <laughs> we've got some babies so it is half five people um we've done really well i can't believe how fast that time has flown and it's really give me um you know, when everyone was, was talking, I had some tears in my eyes. I had goosebumps. Um, there's so much creativity here. And I think going forward, there'll be so much more that we can do as well. Arthur, what did you... I, I, you're dying to say something. Go on, Arthur. <laughs> yes, yes. Sorry about to extend this. Uh, just really quickly, uh, I want to do a kind of little bit of promotion. Uh, Many Hands One Heart, my asylum uh, support group for LGBT people, we are going to release a series of podcasts. It's a kind of interview with some of the members telling their stories back on their countries, some of them telling stories here in England. So if someone else wanted to know a little bit more about the reality of asylum seekers, LGBT asylum seekers, we made this collaboration with Heart of Glasses from St. Helens. So you can Google the Facebook or the website of Sahir House there's the, uh, the we're going to release that soon so we're going to upload that them and we're going to share also by social media with higher house so if anyone is more interested in in this project with men, uh, to know uh, more about lgbt asylum seekers here in liverpool uh, you can follow sahir house and social media so you can stay tuned to our project uh, i love that and adele or rebecca did you want to have a closing statement before we go mm. Um, I just wanted to say thank you, thank you everybody for joining and thank the artists for their for their contributions this year. I want to thank Sarah for bringing Culture Liverpool in and doing so much, and Rebecca from for for supporting the festival as well and widening the dialogue. Um, and and just hope that some of these thoughts and reflections we can can move forward with over the coming couple of years because that's that's the intention really um, to be able to work. Um, to work again more on some of these pieces of work would be amazing.